So I just wanted to introduce Nova SM3. She is now much longer in her body, about 100 millimeters. She has a few new improvements, including a new PS2 housing, new top cover, two-piece top cover, which can be glued together, and the two-piece bottom cover, as well as a new battery compartment hatch cover. There's also a new bracing inside underneath this cover, so let's dive right in and take a look at that. Hello once again, lovely people. So here is an update, a pretty major update. In fact, we've gone so far at this point, I am calling her now Nova SM3. So I've updated my GitHub and Thingiverse. Thingiverse, I just uploaded, uploaded the new files. GitHub, I actually created a new sub-project called Nova SM3. So look out for that if you're interested in implementing these newest changes. And those newest changes include extending her body, which includes several new um, body panel changes, as well as a few other alterations. And breaking the mega circuit out to a nano so that we have two circuits now, two Arduino boards and two sets of code which are all on my GitHub. Okay, so I realize this camera angle isn't the greatest to show off these changes as far as aesthetics go, so I'll do a little handheld video at the end of this to show how it looks a little better in perspective. But anyhow, so there is the new length of her. You can see the split line. I had to do the body top and the bottom in two pieces because now she's too long to fit my 3D printer and surely most 3D printers um, and I have not glued it yet so that seam needs to be glued shut and then it'll be perfect like that. Just for reference this was the original top so you can see we've stretched her now by about 40% equally on both sides. Oops. It's I've been saying 50 millimeters, but I believe it's actually 49 millimeters on each side. She's now grown. So she's grown about 100 millimeters. Okay, so while I was doing these new panels also, I noticed one little design flaw, and I believe it goes back to the original files, though it may have been me. The two shoulder blocks sit like three, maybe four millimeters off from each other. They're not flat planed. And that is what was causing the problem for me all along, breaking these tabs, these screw holes, because this panel was rocking. Okay? Unfortunately, I noticed that while I was building these panels, and yeah, I'm not prepared to take apart the whole thing and then redo the shoulder screw mounts so that they're even on the chassis, because that would require yeah, disassembling just too much for me right now. So I came up with a fix that requires not having to disassemble things and reprint things. And actually it serves two purpose, purposes. So you can see now that seam is closed up on its own. That's also because of the weak chassis really. It's just got two thin bars on the side of it. She tends to bend just a little bit. You can see that if I bend her on purpose. And I don't think that's my extensions. I think that existed before the extensions. So that, coupled with these shoulders being off level, yeah, putting a lot of stress on this cover as well as that seam, even though, again, I have not glued this seam yet. So let's look at the cover. So yes, it's now two pieces. And I added these little tabs on this side and then one on either side on this piece so that they don't snap together, but they go together nicely so it gives you a little extra surface to glue on as well as a little stability on the joint. Honestly, I may not even glue mine. Once we get this nice and solid and square, it should be okay. And before I go ahead and take that completely off, I've also redone the PS2 housing. I did want to install this in the cavity in her, but honestly it just didn't fit because with the receiver and the remote that goes in it. It's pretty long, pretty big, pretty bulky, so that didn't work out. So I redid a housing there for the top instead. So this is what it used to look like. 
pretty big, pretty bulky. And yes, I had a PIR sensor on the top, but I've removed that. So now I've gone ahead and designed a little more sleek housing. And actually I've taken this another step further and, and rounded this just a little bit more, keeping a flat top so that way it can print nice and flat like that right on your bed. This actually took no supports and it, so it came out great. And then the receiver just snaps right in here. You could put a dab of hot glue there, but I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if you take it in and out several times, it may eventually get loose. And then the receiver fits right in there. And yes, you won't be able to put DuPont connectors on there, but you can either remove this pin header and put it underneath instead, which is probably what I'll end up doing. And there's also enough room here where I think I'm going to put just a single status LED, maybe an RGB LED or just a green or a red one, just to have some status light on the top. And then that's going to sit right there. I may decide to put it in the middle, which would help stabilize the seam, and then I definitely won't have to glue it up. So for the time being, I've put no fasteners on this. I may just put little studs here of plastic, which is what I did with this one on two sides and then I screwed the other two corners but those two little nubs just fit pretty tightly into two holes that I had in her lid so I may just do that with this or I may just glue it on or I may just add um, threaded inserts here and attach it on so anyhow this 3d file is also on my github and thingiverse but keep in mind there's no fasteners on it yet okay so that's that piece and now, yes, the top is in two pieces, so we'll go ahead and take that off. And now let's quickly talk about the structure here. So, yes, to prevent the, the bending that's going on inside of here, as you could probably see again if I flex her a little bit, I was thinking we just need a brace right here in the middle. And you can see I even have to squeeze it in there a little bit. And once it's in there, great. And it's at this point I noticed that these two shoulders were not at the same level. This one is like three millimeters lower than this one. And then that same problem occurs on the bottom but opposite. So anyhow, I, I figured that brace would work great to keep this stable. So now it doesn't flex at all. And then especially when I screw it in, it absolutely won't flex at all. But then while I did that, I realized that now this is either going to be on an angle to compensate for that 3 millimeter difference, or it's going to stick up a little bit here. Either solution isn't good for the stress of these screws on the covers. So I went ahead and added just 3 millimeters of plastic mimicking this frame here. So now rather than just put this straight piece in there, we have this little straight piece piece and I should say straight brace and spacer at the same time. So now we have a nice even plane across the two sh shoulders. The only drawback is we have a little bit of space between these two panels now, the top panel and this panel. That's why you see I have these two washers here, actually pretty anodized purple washers that I um I'm using for spacers right there. So then I put the top on top of that and it works perfectly. So that was a great solution without having to reprint things, but there's really probably not reprinting you would have to do, although because it's only three millimeters difference, you probably won't. But these screws right here, these screw holes, have to go down three millimeters so that it brings this piece up and then they're nice and evenly planed. So again, I didn't go through that, nor did I fix the files on my GitHub yet. Okay, so that's the top, new panels, new bracing, which I'm going to screw in there, and this is going to work out great. Um, yes, it will obstruct having to work on this, but you know, when you're done development and ready to start playing with it, <clears throat> you shouldn't have to go in here too often. And if you do, it's really only going to be two screws, and you'll be able to take this brace right out of the way. Okay, now moving on to the bottom, which is the fun part. So I was kept making this deeper and deeper, and it was getting uglier and uglier, and I realized that that was all unnecessary. 
So now what I've gone ahead and I've made the bottom in two parts, actually three parts. This yellow piece here is split down the middle as the top panel was, again because of the size of my printer. And in this case I probably will glue these two together. And also I just, these are just prototypes, so they're printed like <laughs> 0.2 layer height, 0.25 layer height, 10% uh, fill, and, and 0.4 uh, layer with uh, wall thickness so they're very flimsy very crappy right now ignore the quality but anyhow that that's that and then I decided to give the battery cap its own little hatch cover is what I'm calling it and I did that in black so now I'm, I'm not taking up much at all I think it's an extra 20 millimeters and it it's enough to hold the additional wiring that pokes out from the original bottom as well as the battery along the bottom so if we go ahead and fully turn her over, sorry I didn't screw this one on. Unfortunately this one does, or at least I printed this one with support around it, and it was quite a mess to clean up. So I'm going to try and print it again without support, and hopefully it'll come out nice and smooth. Um, because this is the bottom. I'm going to take this off quickly and show you. Actually, I don't have to take separate it from there, but I will. So the reason why I did this in two parts is because, A, these, these are much thinner than the top, therefore they're much more fragile. Therefore, I felt, you know, having to take these on and off every time you, <clears throat> you need to access the battery is going to wear them out, going to make them break. So I thought it would be cool to <clears throat> add this second little battery access panel, we can call it. <clears throat> you know what, I'll just take it off half connected so you can see that too. So it screws to this new bottom panel, which is open, right? And I just put a few breather holes there too, just for fun. And the battery sits in there perfectly. Where's my battery? Can't, oh, it's in there already, see that? So it was fit on there already. Um, you can see this hole I hacked out with clippers. Um, again, this is a prototype piece, so I've gone ahead and updated this, the STL file with that in there, as well as made other little adjustments to it. So the STL files are ready to go for these. <coughs> I was, and, and here as well, I hacked that out, but I also updated the STL file for that as well. So yeah, the battery fits right in there. That That is there so that the wire can pass over the shoulder, shoulder bar here. Oops, sorry about that. <coughs> And yeah, it worked out nice, it looks great, it's going to make changing the battery more convenient and easily, I think, and again, less wear on those two joints there. Now, I was thinking maybe I would put a brace in here as well, but that idea quickly got mooted because of the battery. I mean, there's no way we could put one in the middle, and there's really no way we can get them on the edges because all, all the circuits pretty much come up to the top here, so... Let's see if we can get away with no braces on the bottom part. Again, the, the braces are really re required because you just might be able to see it on video. My chassis is actually bowing this way a little bit as well. And that's because, again, there's not much plastic here. That's probably a, a place that can use a little better design as well. So there you go, guys. Um, I'm not going to try and assemble her right now and on camera and get her on her feet so that you can see what she looks like all complete. I will um, do that and tomorrow at some point do another cool video of her moves, which I've made some improvements on, giving her a little more range within her fake quote-unquote kinematics movements so she can do a, a, a bit more exciting movement at this point. So I'll see you tomorrow night and show off a little bit more of what she can do. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.